These are the awesome features that's available for the Google TV streamer. So aside from this color option, if you live in the States, you also have access to this other color choice to choose from. But now getting started with the main menu, talking about the controller layout, the back arrow, when tapped, it'll quickly take you to the screensaver. And if you pull down, you'll notice you have quick access to your gallery, art gallery, or you could create a custom AI art down here. By doing this, you can use AI images to create basically unique wallpapers for you. So to create one, just hit create one and you could describe an idea by using the microphone that's on the microphone in the controller or click inspire me or select these other options that's also available. So for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna use the microphone because the built-in keyboard is gonna be brutal to type in. Car driving through the mud in the mountains. And let's see what it generates. That's not bad, it looks like a Chevy almost. A mixed hybrid between a Chevy and a Ford. Uh, that looks like a VW. An old school Volkswagen looks like. Th this is pretty good. And of course you could decide to generate again or start over. And once you're satisfied with the one that's created, just hit save. And now this will be your new AI art. Once you select it, when your screensaver starts, and of course you go in and manage the images and delete the ones you don't like. But in screen server mode, you can also use the arrows to switch between right and left if you like to go back some previous images and such. I'll show you more how to customize this. Now, if you don't have this option, this is a part of the beta, but it's available for anybody. You just need to go on your iPhone or your paired Android phone with your Google account for your Google Home and just go tap in the settings section and where it says public preview, in here is where you will be able to join. And usually it will take about a day or a couple minutes for you to be accepted. But now, the home button. If you ever launch like a third party app, and if you long hold, this will actually bring up your control center. From here you have access to your Wi-Fi and such. So it gives you quick access to this, as well as your notifications. Then of course if you tap again, it will take you to your home page. The microphone icon. This is how you enable your virtual voice system for Google. So by long holding, Google will continue listening. You can ask it to do things like change the temperature to your house. If you have like a smart thermos, general question is how the weather is looking like and etc. Basically similar virtual voices than you have access to on a smartphone. And then right below that is your mute and unmute button. But down here where it says YouTube, if you long hold, you can switch the YouTube app to open up other YouTube app services like YouTube music or YouTube TV. Unfortunately, Netflix just does Netflix. That doesn't do anything. But right below that is your favorite button. If you like to program it, just long hold. You don't have to go in the settings. And here you can allow it to quickly launch your Google Home control, your favorite apps. If you wanted to turn into the dedicated app to launch like Netflix or other apps you have installed, just create the shortcut or switch between different inputs on your televisions. The favorite button can now finally be customized. And then in the unit itself, in the back portion, there's a Find My Remote physical button, which you could press and it'll play a sound with the built-in speaker on the remote. So it could help you locate it faster in case it's misplaced, like in the couch or something like that, as a common example. The Google Home app also allows you to play the sound from here as well if you can't have access to Google TV box. So you do have a digital button you can always press. So this interface could be customizable. It's all personal preference. I personally don't like this interface because it's always bombarding me with what feels like ads. But I understand it's supposed to recommend things that it thinks you would like to continue watching, watch live TV and such. Here's all the apps, including apps you can download if you want or have quick access to the app store. And then you get to see the live and such. Uh, again, it's too much information for some, which is why I recommend doing this. By going into your system settings right here in the settings tab, tap the all settings tab and go down to your profile. In here, select your profile because if you look down, yeah, you can also lock this if you like to add a pin code to have access to your profile. If you share it with other people, you could do that. But if we go down where it says apps only mode, by enabling this, this will turn off those recommendation. But if we go all the way to the home menu, you have this cleaner layout, I like to say. It still will preview like certain shows and stuff depending on the app that's promoting certain things. If something gets newly added like this, Inside Out 2 is now released. But all of your apps are down here and you're not. it doesn't feel like you're being bombarded with unnecessary stuff. Personal preference, I like this cleaner layout. 
But unfortunately, the only con to this, if you hold the home button, it's also going to keep your home panel simple. By that, I mean, if you go back to your settings and we go into our profile one more time, and then we disable app only mode, right? And then in the home Google home section, if you enable the home panel, and now if you long hold the home button, you'll see you have Google home control right here. This is due to the fact that as time makes video, the simple app layout does not support the control panel, unfortunately. So just keep that in mind. Now, if your TV isn't adjusting the audio whenever you tap the volume up and down option, you may have CEC disabled. And to make sure if it's enabled or not, in the settings section, you go into display and sound. You go into on the top one where it says display and sound. On the very top, make sure you have HDMI CEC enabled. That allows you to not only volume control the television with just the native room with the Google remote, but also power off or power on your TV as well. And if it still doesn't work for you, look in the back of your TV. Most modern day TVs now have a label on their HDMI port, either it could say AARC or ARC, sometimes also labeled CEC. Make sure the Google TV is plugged into that HDMI port. And as an added bonus, make sure you are using HDMI 2.1 to really take full advantage of the new visual improvements in 4K resolution and sound. Now, since we do know there's some AI built into this unit, the AI can also be used to enhance dialogue. And you can find a setting in the settings section and go into display and sound and scroll all the way down until you find audio options. And right here is where you can enable dialogue enhancer and it will use machine learning to enhance all this. And since we're still in the sound section, if you're not a fan how the TV needs to make a noise whenever you tap on a button on the remote itself, you could disable that here as well. And it'll be in the sound tab where it says system sound, disable that. And then don't forget, this is still is a Chromecast after all, as there's some cast features still enabled on the Google TV. And you can access this, whatever video you're watching on your mobile device, as long as you're on the same Wi-Fi network. If you look closely, that little box with like Wi-Fi symbols, click on here, select the name of the Google TV you like to connect to, and in no time you'll be able to connect that device to the Google TV. So it could stream off that from your phone. You could lock your device from there. As the loading and everything is pretty much inside the unit itself. So it's okay to lock your device, but you'll find that you can still control not just the audio, but also the pause and play functionality, or if you like to switch to a different video to watch. But continuing on in the home menu, if you go to the main menu, home menu, regardless if you're on the app only mode or not, if you like to reorganize all these apps, just long hold on one and you'll find a move option. And here, just select on the app and then just move it around and rearrange it to your own personal preference. And then if you actually are planning on using this Google TV as a quick little gaming console, in settings, you need to enable this. In the display and sound tab, go down in advanced settings, enable allow game mode. This will use a little bit more power. The unit may heat up a little bit more than normal, but it's not enough to be concerned. This will basically just eliminate latency as much as possible. And here you could prefer uh, change your dynamic range as well as format or color format as well. Now the Google TV does support spatial audio as well as Adobe Atmos or Adobe Vision in the audio settings. In the advanced audio sound section, you can see other formats and you can see all the formats that supports right here. So if you have like a tricked out stereo system in your household, you may want to consider perusing here and see which one best suits your personal preference. Now this screensaver layout, if you like to customize it, maybe take out the time or change something with the temperature, you always have that ability. You'll find it in the settings. Go into the system tab and where it says ambient screensaver, click on here, tap settings. Here you can select between personal Google photos you have uploaded, gallery arts, like the default ones that Google provides. But in the weather tab here, you can decide if you want to enable it, hide it, show both Celsius or Fahrenheit. You can allow it to show the time or hide the time, device information if you like to display like Wi-Fi that's connected to or not, personal photo data, you can decide to hide it or not. So it does have a lot of customization options. You can even go down to the slideshow speed too if you want to change it to every, if you want it to be quicker or slower than a minute as we have selected by default. 
But instead of showing a sideshow if you're inactive, you just leave the TV by itself, you can actually adjust the auto turn off ability, which is a great way to save battery life, especially if you have an OLED, as I think this is the best way to prevent yourself from experiencing burn-in. You can find this if we head back, continue heading back, and go into the shutoff timer located in the systems tab. In here, this is where you could adjust the inactive timer, power off your device. So the shortest is 15 minutes, or you can extend it to never if you're a rebel. If reading things, you may want to consider bolting the text. You'll find it in the accessibility tab in the settings section. Go down to accessibility and scroll down where you not only can increase the text scaling if you like to increase the size a bit more, but below there is bolding, making it easier to read in case you have a hard time of reading things, or maybe you're using this on an older TV. And yes, the Google TV is able to sing in notifications when your remote is low on batteries, but if you like to see the exact battery percentage manually in case it's acting funny, you want to verify, see if it's not low and you might have missed that notification, you always have the ability to go back and see it. You'll find it in the remote and accessory tab. And right below here is where you can find the remote battery percentage and it displays you also the firmware update as well from here. And since this does have access to the Google Play Store, you can pair like third party controllers to this and just go ahead and go in here and just put the device in pair mode. You'll be able to pair a Bluetooth wireless controller onto the Google TV. Oh, and here you may also decide on renaming your remote if you want to change the remote name. Not sure why, but they did give us that ability. But still in the remote and accessory tab, Right below here, this is where you can allow it to also turn off other things. In the setup remote button, in here, you could add devices like soundbar receivers and etc. to also turn on and off whenever you hit the power button in the remote. You can also customize the volume rocker too if you want it to be the soundbar or the TV or allow it to automatically do it based off your CEC settings. Now back in our home menu, an overlook feature is located all the way at the very bottom because you can actually manage your services. By managing your service, this is where you can quickly go in and disable some of the subscriptions you have or some that you don't and don't really care about. Now AI summary is also built into this thanks to Gemini, where right below here, some of your content will be easily summarized. So if we go in the sports tab as an example, so this is nice and organized, but by going down, if you tap on like some type of popular show, like Ted Lasso as an example, on top, these two things are all AI generated, allowing you to get a quick overview of what everybody's thinking and the overview summary of what the show and series is about using AI. And if you're unsure what the Google Virtual Assistant can do, you may also always just say this, what can you do? And it'll take you to a YouTube video showing you a brief overview, everything that it can do. But now besides that, that's all the unique things that this Google TV can do. Comment down below which one of these features was your personal favorite. And if we missed one, if you'd like to share it with everybody else, feel free to comment down below. Help out the community. It's pretty awesome. If you enjoyed, you know, like, subscribe, and thank you guys so much for watching.